In this video, I'm giving you five mistakes every Notion expert makes and how to avoid them. These are all mistakes I've made firsthand, so I'm speaking from experience here. If you want to accelerate your progress in becoming a Notion expert, you can download my Notionpreneur roadmap from the video description down below. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Sam. I'm a certified Notion consultant and featured template creator. And welcome back to the Notionpreneur Club. This is a series of videos where I share my experiences as a Notionpreneur making money from Notion and hopefully how you can do the same. Without further ado, let's dive in. Notion Avatar. There's a trend in the Notion community to use a Notion styled avatar for your personal brand. In fact, one of the most successful Notion creators is doing this, and that is Easilo. Its advantage is that it quickly identifies you as a member of the Notion community, whether that be to other Notion experts or potential clients. I've generally found there's two camps to this decision, those for and those against. You'll see that I'm in the against camp, and let me explain why. Although I appreciate some uh, more introverted people like the idea of starting a faceless brand, I think it does more harm than good. Here are four reasons why. First of all, with any business, you're trying to build trust with your potential customers, and that's a lot harder to do behind an avatar. Secondly, you become another faceless avatar that gets lost amongst the crowd. Thirdly, unless you're an established creator like Easlo, I find that these faceless avatars identify you as a bit of a newbie in the game. And finally, it commits you to Notion. So if you decide that you want to go beyond Notion in your business in any way, you've sort of sectioned yourself off to a particular community. So you may be asking, how should I brand my Notion business? Well, let's dive into that in the next section doubling down on a niche too soon. The number one bit of advice we hear throughout the Notion community is to find a niche. However, latching onto a niche just for the sake of it is a huge mistake that I've made myself. When I started, I did what many do and looked to one of my existing passions and tried to turn that into my niche. For me, that was screenwriting as I had studied at university and created many scripts and films. And so my defined notion niche was I was going to make templates for writers and screenwriters. I branded everything under the name of Notion Create as I was working for creative people. However, along the way, I started Notion Consulting and working for businesses. And so I reverted this brand into a more generic and general brand under the name of Notion Upgrades. That eventually got flagged up by Notion's brand guidelines. And so then I had to yet again rebrand to a new name. And this time I decided to start a personal brand under Sam Bird. There are two lessons here to glean from my branding nightmare. One, treat your business like a business and go through the steps of product market fit in the very beginning. This includes finding your ICP or your ideal customer profile, doing some primary market research in the form of jumping on calls with people or um, uh, making people fill out type forms, creating MVPs or minimal viable products for us Notion creators that might be creating a freebie Notion template, and then deciding whether to keep, kill or pivot on the niche that you've, uh, you've gone for as you're going through this stage of product market fit. The second thing is, and what you might have identified from my branding nightmare, are there two types of brands you can go for? That is corporate brands or personal brands. If we're going for a corporate brand, again, make it non-specific to Notion, as well as avoiding the brand guidelines. It also means that you're not narrowing yourself to one specific technology. But my personal preference is personal brands because as you'll be making lots of content online as a Notion expert, this means you open yourself up to more opportunities and creating yeah, the, the business around you and the content that you make. Not getting into Notion consulting. A post that I made on X a while back got a bit of attention online and it's where I said that Notion consulting is easier to start than selling Notion templates. A lot of people, as you might imagine, massively disagreed with that uh, idea. So I thought I'll take some time to explain that in this video. But the main thing I wanna preface this with is that lots of Notion experts just lean into the Notion creation side, so selling Notion templates. And a lot of them leave a lot of money on the table by not getting into Notion consulting. But why do I think Notion consulting is easier to get into? Well, the first thing is, if you've ever read anything by Alex Hormozzi, you'll be aware of the idea of the sales continuum. And essentially what he speaks about is that 
uh, there's two different uh, continuums that are working uh, in play together. Um, you have things that are hard to deliver, but they are easy to sell. And then at the end of the other spectrum, you have things that are easy to deliver and hard to sell. And so when we think about this in terms of Notion, you would have Notion Consulting is hard to deliver in that you have to get on calls with clients. It's a very done for you service. It takes up your time. Um, but because of that, it's easier to sell because people can see directly the value you're giving them, which is your time, your expertise, you're building something custom for them. And then at the end, other end of the, of the continuum, you have Notion templates, which are things that are easy to make. Um, and then once you've created them, there's no work for you to do when someone downloads or buys a template. And for that reason, it's then a lot harder to sell. It's an actual digital product. And so you have to build a lot of brand awareness. You have to um, uh, get a lot of trust uh, in the product. Um, and for that reason, it's a lot harder to do. Lots of people say that Notion Consulting um, has a higher barrier to entry um, and it's a heavier lift at the start. Notion Consulting being a higher barrier to entry is actually a great thing because there mean, it means there's less competition. As well as that, consulting enriches your templates. Um, so for my Notion for Agencies template, I created it after working with over 50 different agencies. And so that template that I finally created had been trialed and tested by real world clients and had so much value packed in it because of my consulting experience. And also it's a high ticket service, which means you're gonna be able to leave your nine to five sooner um, because you're actually gonna be bringing in the money um, right away. Staying with hourly rates for too long. So here's my experience with pricing my Notion consulting services. First of all, I jumped on Upwork and naturally on Upwork, there's two ways of uh, charging clients. You can either do hourly contracts or you can do project-based contracts. Now, when I was starting out, because I didn't know how to price uh, any of my projects, because I didn't know how long they would take, naturally, I just went for an hourly rate and clients were very happy to do this because they could literally track um, on a day-to-day on -day basis um, how much uh, they would be in charged. Now, my hourly rate on Upwork was $25 an hour, and that's because everyone else on Upwork who were Notion experts um, were charging slightly more than that. And so because when I was starting out, I was trying to sort of cut my prices to then um, uh, basically get my first couple of clients. And I stayed at that $25 hour rate for about an entire year when I first was starting Notion. Um, and so if you look back to one of my other videos where I talk about how, how much I made in my first year as a Notion expert, it's not a lot because I stayed with that hourly rate for so long. Not only was having that uh, low hourly rate um, detrimental to making money for me, um, but it also had a side effect of, first of all, being a race to the bottom. So the only way to get more clients in was to char uh, charge even less and less. And also as a whole, um, as a community of Notion consultants, um, uh, it brought down the perceived value of our services by being that low for so long. So what's the alternative to this? I still think hourly rates are good at the very start because as I said, if you don't know how long something takes you and you can't see the sort of perceived value of something, it's quite hard to price something in the beginning. But I think that should only happen for the first two to three months. And then you wanna move on to another model and that's called project-based pricing. And essentially what this means is that you're going to charge upfront how much you think the entire project costs. Um, and then that is the one-off one price for this. The other alternative model is um, a sort of monthly recurring revenue based model. Um, and so that would be uh, charging like a subscription for your services every month. And there'll be a sort of scope of how much work you do each month for them. Um, I've done both of these different models. I had a retainer at one point in time. Um, at the moment now I'm doing projects based pricing and I've even started to create a bit of a hybrid model where I would do the project or the, the most of the work upfront as a project based pricing. And then I do retainer in the form of support, not learning automations. My final mistake for you as a Notion expert um, is not learning enough automations or not learning any automations in the beginning. And this has come uh, completely from uh, my own experience. When I first got into Notion, I was just obsessed with the software itself and I didn't really care about any other softwares or even getting into automations. And so my first couple of client projects, um, all of the clients would be asking me, can I do this with Notion? Can I make it send emails? Can I uh, bring in Calendly bookings? All this kind of thing. 
and I didn't know because I'd never done automations. And this drastically um, uh, uh, was, was detrimental to the client experience. Um, they couldn't get as much value out of me because they couldn't do everything they needed to do to systematize their operations. Um, and it meant that I uh, lacked a certain confidence in my discovery calls because when they asked me questions like that, I just didn't know. Um, so my advice to you is to get into automations early and there's a great resource that you can use right now, which is the Make Academy. They have an entire academy that you can go through to learn their software. Um, and at the end of the academy, you also get a Make Partner certification, um, which again is a great thing to have in terms of social proofing. So get into automations, take away that uncertainty in your client calls. Again, the link is down below in the description where you can download the Notionpreneur Roadmap, my 365 day guide to growing a Notion business. If you found this video useful, you can check out my other video, which is eight ways to make money using Notion. And if you're enjoying my videos, please do consider subscribing and leaving this video a like. Until then, bye-bye.